In this lab, we will create a serverless machine learning model on Google Cloud, GCP. For related videos and the full course link, check the description. If we have our own hardware or infrastructure to run the machine learning model, we'll have to pay for the maintenance cost. Even if nobody is using our model, we still need to pay for the cost of the VM. With a serverless cloud model, we do not need to worry about the maintenance and cost of the underlying infrastructure. We can focus on writing our business logic in a function and will be charged based on the number of times that function is invoked. If nobody is invoking that function, we will not be charged. That is the serverless model, the next big thing in cloud computing. Let's now see how to create a serverless function on Google Cloud. To run the machine learning model, first, we need to upload the model to Google Cloud. Google Cloud has a storage service called Bucket where we can store the model. It is an object storage service like AWS S3 or Azure Blob. Click Create Bucket to create a bucket and give it a name. The name has to be globally unique as bucket names reside in a single namespace shared by all Google storage users. Click Continue. We will select a single region and specify the location. Later, we will make sure Google Cloud Function runs in the same location. The storage type can be standard. You can leave it as default. Fine-grained access control is fine. You can have a Google managed key for your bucket. We're not going into the details of storage. Just leave everything as default, then hit create. Now the bucket has been created. We can see the bucket here, and under it, we can create a folder or directly upload files. Let's create a folder. We will name it Models. Next, we will go into the Models folder and upload the model pickle files. Let's upload classifier pickle and sc pickle to this bucket folder. Both files have been uploaded. We can go back to the bucket root directory and see all our buckets. I have a few buckets that were created earlier. This is a new one that I just created. I also have a bucket named FX Skills with a model folder, and under that, the same files are available. Next, we will search for cloud functions. Search and select Cloud Functions. This is the Cloud Functions main page. Cloud Functions is a serverless service that lets us write and run code without worrying about managing the underlying infrastructure. There are some functions already here that we created earlier. To create a new function, click Create Function. A quick note, if you're using Google Cloud Functions for the first time, you'll be prompted to enable the APIs. Do that before you can create any functions. We can give our function a new name, or keep the default name. Let's keep the region default, matching the bucket region. We will set the trigger type as HTTP since we will be invoking the function using REST over the HTTP protocol. We will allow unauthenticated invocations because this function is for demonstration purposes. In a production environment, Based on your use case, you may need to enable authentication to ensure only intended users access this cloud function.
we can specify how much memory is required for this cloud function. 256 MemB should be sufficient to run the machine learning classification model we built earlier. We'll keep the timeout duration as default, 60 seconds. Let's keep everything else as default. Hit save. Then click next. Next, we will select the runtime, which will be Python 3.7. By default, we get a main.py file to write our code. Cloud Functions has a code editor interface, as shown here. We can see a default Hello World Python program in the editor, called main.py, which we can modify. We also get a requirements.txt file in which we can specify all the dependencies for our Python program. This would mainly include various Python libraries needed to run our machine learning code. I've already written a function for the machine learning code. Let me open that function. Let me click edit to view the code. This function was created with the trigger type set to HTTP. You can see the trigger URL here, which can be accessed to invoke the function. Click Next to go to the code editor. Let's understand the code written here. We need to import the requests library, as we did earlier while creating a Flask REST API. Google Cloud Functions also uses Flask to create a REST API for any Python function, so the request library needs to be imported. Next, we need to import the pickle library to work with pickle files for our model. We also need to import the Google Cloud Storage SDK to work with the storage service. Using this SDK, we will access the pickle files that we uploaded to a bucket folder earlier. We will also require the NumPy library. Within the function, first we will read the request JSON and store it in a variable, as we have done before. Next, we will instantiate the storage client and store it in a variable, rank. After that, we will create an instance of the bucket by invoking the getBucket method of the storage client, passing the bucket name as a parameter. The bucket object has a blob method, which allows us to load the pickle files and create objects. Let's create objects for the classifier and the scalar. Note that you will need to specify the path of the pickle files, including the folder name and the file name. We cannot directly use these classifier and scalar objects in this function. The way cloud functions work is that first we need to download the pickle files to a temporary directory and then load them from there to use in our function. Google Cloud Functions provides a temporary directory, TMP, under which we can download the pickle files and then load them to local objects as shown here. We have loaded the pickle files to two serverless components, a classifier and a scalar, which we will use for prediction. After that, the code is pretty much the same as what we did earlier. Read the input parameters, age, and salary. Scale them and feed them to the model to get the prediction. Return the output in the requirements.txt file. We need to capture all the dependencies. Specify the libraries and their versions for our model. We need requests, scikit-learn, Google Cloud Storage, and NumPy libraries. Now our function is ready. Let's click Deploy to deploy our function. It takes a few seconds for the function to deploy. If you make any changes to your function, you will have to deploy it again. 
The function has been deployed. Let's click on the function name to check some details. We can see various metrics about the function, like how many times it was invoked over different time periods. Charges are based on the number of requests. Since we're using a Google Cloud free trial, the charges are deducted from the credits in our account. Under the Source tab, you will find the source code. The Trigger tab contains the HTTP endpoint information. The Cloud Functions service provides a testing interface to test a function without using any external REST client. To test our function, we need to send the input parameters in JSON format. Let's create a JSON string with age and salary as the input parameters the function expects. Now, click on Test the function to trigger a request. We can see the prediction from the cloud function, 0 0.2. Change age to 42 and salary to 50,000. Click test the function again. And the prediction is 0 0.8 as expected. We can view the logs of the cloud function under the logs section. The print statements we added are displayed here. If the function execution fails for any reason, the error message will appear in the logs, which can assist in troubleshooting. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit subscribe and the bell icon. Also, check out our top rated model deployment course on Udemy, linked in the description.